sometimes when I look at the state of the church today, I, I'm concerned about many things. But my deepest concern is with the gospel itself. I'm really afraid that we're in a time where the gospel is in eclipse uh, because everything but the gospel is called the gospel. Again, in the 16th century, the heart of the Reformation, Luther warned his contemporaries. He said, anytime the gospel is preached clearly and boldly, it will produce conflict. And people don't like conflict. And so, as a result, they will change the gospel, water it down, or try to take away its offense. And so instead of preaching the gospel, which has to do with the person and work of Jesus Christ, it focuses on Christ and on his work. Instead, we tell people, here's the gospel. I preached the gospel today. I told people, come to Jesus and all of your problems will be over. Come to Jesus and find happiness in your life. Well, I believe it's true that the source of happiness is Jesus, but that's not the gospel. Those incentives, and I hear, worse, I hear preachers saying, God loves you unconditionally. And I say, whoa, what does that person in the pew hear? When they hear somebody say, God loves them unconditionally, that means he loves me just exactly as I am and precisely he's glad I turned out nicely. It's like Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. And he's saying, I don't have to repent. I don't have to come to Christ. I don't have to be convicted by the law of God. You know, the law of God is perfect, the Bible says, and converts the soul. That is, the conversion is not by the law itself, but by the word of God, because his word is law. That's the way the language of the Old Testament functions. But we hide the law. And where there's no law, there's no awareness of any need of the gospel. We tell people, they don't need to repent because God loves them just the way they are. And the only reason to come to Jesus is to have greater peace or greater happiness or a better trip than they'll get from drugs. That's not the gospel at all.